Traditional packing peanuts are made of polystyrene, most commonly known as styrofoam, while biodegradable packing peanuts are made of natural materials like wheat and cornstarch. Polystyrene packing peanuts do not break down once discarded and can spend years in landfills, lakes, oceans, and waterways. In fact, some experts say it could take 500 years for traditional packing peanuts to decompose. Recycling options for polystyrene packing peanuts are extremely limited as the styrofoam can only be repurposed back into itself or a similar material. The organic materials found in biodegradable packing peanuts allow the loose fill to break down or decompose once discarded. Decomposing makes them significantly better for the environment compared to traditional packing peanuts, which, when used exclusively for shipping or protecting items during a move, is great. But this is an orchid channel after all, and when dealing with epiphytes, they can grow and will grow on pretty much everything. So recycling packing peanuts for orchids, is that an option? Yes or no? Or if it is not an option, when is it not an option and why not? It's good to have you here. Thank you for clicking on the video, which was inspired by a question from Pat S. Freund. First of all, if using packing peanuts in any application with orchids, even if you were to consider it as a mount, please use the not so environmentally friendly packing peanuts made out of styrofoam. This is one way we can contribute to recycling as orchid growers. But you don't want to be using the biodegradable ones because they will disintegrate to a slimy sludge as that is what they are designed to do, biodegrade. A surefire way to test if the packing peanuts your orchids were shipped in are biodegradable no matter the coloration is to run water over two or three of them. Biodegradable packing peanuts will dissolve in water as the organic compounds will begin to break down and it will only take a few minutes for the peanuts to completely dissolve. So you can see how these are not fit for purpose in any application when it comes to using them with orchids and then there are some who caution against using any colored styrofoam peanuts. However, the jury is still out if the ink in the peanuts has any negative effect on the roots of the orchids. Personally, I doubt it very much. However, it is important to note that the opinions are varied whether the colored ones are safe or not. So here's a little call to action. If you are using or have used colored styrofoam peanuts in the pots of your orchids, please let us know in the comments if everything stays okay with the orchid roots as they come into contact with them. Little fun intel on the side. The green colored peanuts indicate that they have been made with recycled materials. The pink ones are treated to be anti-static. But that does not mean that the white and green ones are not treated to be antistatic because they are as well. I just think it's interesting that when we see the green ones, they are recycled. So when it comes to using the non-biodegradable packing peanuts, most commonly the peanuts are placed in the bottom third or quarter of the pot to promote good drainage, as well as to create a shallower pot for orchids that need to be bumped up in pot size. Because with that size increase, many pots also get deeper, which is not so ideal for shallower rooted orchids that wander around the pot on long rhizomes. And sometimes we're stuck with the fact that we can't find a suitable low bowl. They are not that easy to source. This is sort of the opposite of semi-hydroponics, where the styrofoam provides an air-filled space in the bottom of the pot, while the potting media holding the water and nutrients is in the upper part of the pot. And yes, if orchid roots were to reach the styrofoam layer when it comes to repotting, you will see that they are happily growing through and around the styrofoam peanuts, minus possibly the ones with ink on them. But again, I'm anticipating your experience to be in the comments. The beauty of the styrofoam is that it will not draw moisture out of the velamen. There is no risk of roots desiccating while they attach themselves to the peanuts when the orchid culture involves a wet dry cycle or if the pot is left dry for many months, as is the case with some potted orchids that need a dry winter rest. There are two forms of styrofoam that we can recycle in this manner. One, the peanuts shaped version, and then there's the styrofoam that comes in blocks or boards, possibly molded into shapes where the electronics and other products are fitted into for safe shipping. If you have that kind of styrofoam on hand, make sure to break it up into sizable chunks that you can distribute on the bottom of the pot because this this type of foam is sometimes too thick and rigid to be used when repotting. Instead, use the softer polystyrene
margarine that can be easily broken into chunks appropriate for the pot size you are using. You might be tempted to cut out the circumference of the pot from a styrofoam piece you have on hand and then create holes in it for drainage. I would advise against that. The bottom third of the pot in the middle is the area of the pot that retains moisture for the longest period of time and if you fill the rest of the pot with potting media this is where possible root rot will begin, especially if you're using bark or sphagnum moss in your potting mix. You want to break up the pieces into angular chunks to maximize maximize the airspace between them. The styrofoam does allow water to drain from the pot. That is what makes it such a great material for crocking, but more importantly, it provides a reservoir of air at the bottom of the pot that roots can tap into, and a solid chunk at the bottom of the pot is not going to provide all those benefits, so break up that styrofoam if you're going to use it for crocking. What I would advise against long term is if you were to use styrofoam in the potting mix itself, as an alternative, for example, to sponge rot, so as to provide porosity and airiness to the potting mix without the worry of it decomposing like bark. While it does not hold on to moisture or absorb salts and is a good counterbalance to sphagnum moss and peat-based media mixes that tend to be water and salt retentive, you really want to consider the following downsides of doing that, which are the light particles are easily windblown as they will possibly rise to the top of the pot after a certain period of time. They do not really help in stabilizing an orchid into the pot while the orchid is trying to grow roots and the spent mixes cannot be easily reused in the landscape without going about picking the styrofoam out if you happen to actually take your old media and throw it into your garden or if you have 500 years to wait for it to decompose but birds will pick them up thinking they are seeds and then that will be in their stomachs and it could starve them potentially because they cannot digest the styrofoam so please be mindful about using it in your potting mix as a counterbalance and then just throwing it into your landscape without removing it from the actual organic media mix. Having said all that, you probably have already drawn the conclusion for yourself that styrofoam or packing peanuts are not suitable for any form of semi-hydroponic setup. The material will not wick water from a reservoir up the media and if LECA is not a stable media for the duration of orchids growing roots and anchoring the orchid in place securely, a time period in which we have to be very careful as to how we handle the pot until the orchid has grown roots long enough, then styrofoam is even even less of a media that will help anchor the orchid in place. Besides that, when it comes to watering or flushing, it will always float right up and out of the pot. Even if you were to consider a layer of pebbles on the surface of the pot to minimize that from happening, the pebbles will also always be a little on the unstable side, which is not ideal for root tips no matter where they find themselves, be it on the surface of the pot as they are just growing new or under the pebbles. When you think of semi-hydroponics, you have to really consider your media has to have wicked capacity and styrofoam does not do that at all. Now if you live in a high humidity environment with a lot of rainfall, I think a board of styrofoam makes for a great mount. In this instance I would use the more sturdier type of styrofoam that I advised against using in pots. The reason being you do not want your orchid to grow large and heavy only to have the weight of the orchid snap your styrofoam mount. However, if you're growing your orchids in a climate and your humidity is not high, you will need to find an alternative water retentive media like sphagnum moss, or in my case, I use a lot of hob filter material to substitute for sphagnum moss. Because always remember, no matter how you use styrofoam, it will not absorb or retain water, resulting in a styrofoam board mount being extremely dry. Still, if I were to be in the wet dry cycle form of cultivating my orchids, I would be using the packing peanuts to crock the bottom of many of my larger pots because it definitely helps when it comes to saving on how much media is needed to fill a pot, which is always a very kind side effect for the wallet. You save yourself a lot of money if you can crock with styrofoam packing peanuts instead of wasting all that space by using media where eventually orchid roots may not grow. 
So please let me and others know your experience with using packing peanuts or styrofoam for your orchids. Add them to the comments for anyone looking for more information or variations of using this material. I would so appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up, share it around, and I would also appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. Thank you so much for the support and thank you so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful day on the condition that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.